Here is a question to fellow compact cassette hobbyists. Do you know what is a bias adjust knob? Do you use it? Do you think it helps? Let's find out. First, what is bias? It is high frequency current that shakes up the particles of magnetic tape right before they are magnetized. This is similar to shaking iron filings when plotting magnetic field lines around a magnet. Without the shaking, it is harder for the filings to orient themselves because of friction. On the other hand, if the shake is too violent, the filings will be swept off the sheet. The same applies to tape bias. With not enough bias, tape is not properly magnetized and distortion increases. With too much bias, high-frequency output is reduced. Tape recorders ensure the correct bias for each type of tape. But even within each type, tape from different manufacturers can have slightly different properties, so some cassette decks have a knob to adjust bias within a relatively narrow window. Calibrating a 3-head deck with white or pink noise is relatively simple. You will start recording the noise on tape and switch between the source and the tape while adjusting the bias knob. The goal is to make the input noise and the recorded noise to sound the same. If you hear a loss of travel on the recording, you would reduce bias. If the recorded sound is too bright, you would increase bias. Things get more complicated on a two-head deck, as you need to record a series of test signals first, then play the recorded tape back and assess the recorded sound at each bias setting. Some 1990 Sony decks have built-in test tone generator, which produces 400 Hz and 8 kHz tones. So I thought that I can do the same. My plan is to record a test signal with 400 Hz on one channel and 8 kHz on another channel. I can generate such a test tone in Audacity, save it into a file, drop the file on a smartphone and play it into my cassette deck. I can even do better by using CoolSoft Function Generator app for Android which allows to output different frequency on each channel. Now the touchy issue of recording level. I chose minus 3 dB because it's smack in the middle on the meter of my deck and it is 5 dB below Dolby level, so the compression is minimal. I am going to record the test signal, changing the bias value from the lowest to the highest every three points on the counter. Here is my spreadsheet for the results which I'll be writing in while playing the recording back. I'm going to test several tapes, three type 2 tapes and three type 1, and compare the results. If anything, I will be able to rank these tapes between each other. So what does this little experiment show? True chrome tape loses sensitivity over time. The Sony chrome cannot be used for a Dolby Eyes recording as the Dolby tracking will be incorrect on playback, the recording will sound too dull unless the deck has recording level compensation. It is still usable for recordings without Dolby. Ferro Cobalt Type 2 tape is in perfectly usable condition 40 years after manufacture. This particular TDK tape works just fine with reduced bias. This may have been an intended characteristic, because many 1970s decks did not have Type 2 selector, so I suppose that this tape would work in a deck that supported Type 1 tape only. The Maxell XL2 is from an era when Type 2 has long become mainstream. It can take extra bias, which presumably helps to reduce distortion. It was interesting to compare the Maxell to the TDK. They are on the different sides of the spectrum, so to speak. Now switching to Type 1 tape, the Maxell UR, a very compatible tape that can benefit from just a tiny bias bump, but works just fine as a neutral setting. Another perfectly compatible tape, 1982 TDK-D. And finally, a 1977 Maxell UD-XL with almost textbook behavior of treble response steadily decreasing as bias is increased. I think this just shows that the industry had ferric tapes perfected by the end of 1970s. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Goodbye.